change your thoughts and you change your world. In the last video, we learned that we have two protocols in transport layer of OSI. And the two protocols are TCP and UDP. So now we will discuss about what is TCP, what type of service it provides to the internet applications. So in this lecture, we will be discussing about introduction to TCP and its feature. The key takeaway for this video is why TCP is called as byte stream protocol and what is TCP features. Today's agenda is introduction to TCP the background of TCP, and then we will have TCP connection oriented protocol, why it is, why it is called as byte stream protocol, and TCP features in which we'll see that multiplexing and demultiplexing, reliable transmission, flow control, full duplex, and congestion control of TCP. The TCP IP suite is a set of protocol that forms the backbone of the internet and many other networks. It is named after two of the most important protocols, the transmission control protocol and the internet protocol, which is IP. TCP is responsible for ensuring that data is reliable transmitted between devices on the network. It breaks data down into small segments, send them across the network, and then it will reassemble them into original data at the receiving end. It also handles error correction, congestion control, flow control. Whereas in IP, it is responsible for routing the packet of data between devices in different networks. In addition to TCP and IP, the TCP IP suite, which includes several other protocols that are used for various tasks. So we will be discussing about the main protocol, which is transmission control protocol stands for TCP. As we know that TCP is a connection oriented and wide stream protocol. So what is connection oriented protocol? They establish the connection between two applications by contacting each other before they exchange the data. Similar, we establish the mobile connection between two users and then say, hello, how are you? And what is byte stream is? If an application on one end writes 10 bytes followed by 20 bytes followed by 50 bytes of data, at the receiver side, when the application may read that 80 bytes of data, so it will read the data, let's say, as 20 bytes at a time, which includes four segments. So once the transport layer get the data from application layer, so first thing it will do, it will segment the data. It will divide the data in segments. And the sender side puts the stream of bytes into TCP. Let's say the identical stream of byte appears as 20 bytes as from the sender side. At the receiver side, same identical stream of byte will appear at the other end as well. So TCP does not interpret the content of the bytes in the byte stream at all. The interpretation of the byte stream is up to the application layer at each end of the connection. So this is what the byte stream is. TCP reliability. Because TCP provides byte stream interface, so TCP will convert the application stream of bytes into segments. Then it delivered to the lower layer. So the set of packets that IP can carry, that is called as packetization. The packets which contains the sequence number, which actually TCP represents the bytes offset of the first byte of each packet. So basically, it uses sequence number to ensure that all bytes are delivered. So suppose I am sending 1460 bytes of a segment, one byte to 1460 byte that is being delivered from sender to the receiver. So how I will come to know that receiver receive all the bytes, it sends an acknowledgement. For instance, if I send three segments, segment one, segment two, and segment three, and out of that segment two is dropped, not able to receive, not able to make to the receiver. In that case, TCP will retransmit that. That is the nature of TCP for the reliable transmission. If any packet got lost, then it will do a retransmission if I didn't get the acknowledgement for that. 
Multiplexing, demultiplexing services are provided almost every protocol architecture. So TCP and UDP performs the multiplexing and demultiplexing by including a special field in the segment header, which is called as source port and destination port. So whenever we are talk about a multiplexing, we have multiple applications from the sender side which will envelop that data with a header and then send them to the intended receiver. At the demultiplexing side, at the receiver end, it will demultiplex and deliver receive segments at the receiver side to a correct application process, which is called as demultiplexing. In order to do the multiplexing and demultiplexing by a device, by a transport layer, so we have the special fields here is source port destination port. So source port and destination port, if you see here, we have three different connections. And based on these three different connections, what we have is source port is selected over a, a random, randomly selected source port. So from this PCAP, so as we see that, we have three different connections and source port and destination port makes demultiplexing and multiplexing. So source port is selected by the operating system, which is randomly selected. And if you see the destination port, the destination port is what HTTPS. So we have three services and based on this three services, we select the source port randomly, which is, which makes the connection unique. And the destination port is basically 443, which is going to HTTPS based on the applications. So this is the another connection in which we select the source port randomly and the destination port is same, which is HTTPS. And the third connection is a different source port number selected randomly and the destination port is 443. So the source port is selected by the operating system that is a random port. So that source port, destination port, source IP and destination IP makes the, makes the fourth tuple as unique. And based on this, a session created is three different sessions will be created because here we have the source IP is same, destination IP is different, destination port is same, source port is different. So the four tuple make a session unique. So the next is we already discussed about reliable point to point data transfer. Next feature is full duplex. So data flow in each direction, independent of the direction. So in order to maintain the full duplex, so it will maintain a sequence number, let's say starting from N. If sender B is sending the data, it will maintain a different sequence number let's say sequence number M. So that makes each flow unique. As a result, we will achieve full duplex mode with TCP. TCP flow control is a mechanism used to regulate the flow of data between two devices. It ensures that the sender do not overwhelm the receiver with more data that it can handle at once, which can lead to drop packets and network congestion. Also, TCP flow control works using sliding window protocol. When a data is sent over a TCP connection, the sender includes the window size in the TCP header. This window size indicates the amount of data that the receiver is currently able to receive. As the receiver processes the data, it sends back an acknowledgement with an updated window size. Now the sender then adjusts the amount of data it sent based on the window size and sending only as much data as the receiver can handle at a given time. So this helps to ensure that the receiver is not overwhelmed with the data and that packet is not lost due to congestion. So TCP flow control is an important part of overall TCP protocol and it helps to ensure reliable transmission of data over the internet and other networks. Without it, networks would be more prone to congestion, packet loss, and other issues that can impact the performance. In order to understand flow control with our real life situation, 
Suppose a waiter in a restaurant who is taking order from multiple tables at once. The waiter needs to ensure that they don't take too many orders at once and overwhelm the kitchen. So also at the same time, they ensure not to leave the tables waiting too long for their orders to be taken. So here the tables are senders and the receivers are the part of order which represent the data being transmitted. To avoid overwhelm the kitchen, the waiter use flow control to limit the amount of data that has been transmitted once. So if TCP sends too much of data at once in the network, may become congested and as a result packet loss or delay or leads to a performance issue. Congestion control is the next feature. So it's a process to manage the flow of data in a network to prevent congestion, which occurs when the demand of the network resource exceeds the available capacity. So congestion can lead to packet loss, increased latency, and also reduce the throughput. So TCP send rate increase exponentially until the packet has been dropped. So TCP use a form of congestion control called additive increase multiplicative decrease, which is AIMD. When TCP detects congestion, it reduces its send rate by cutting it to half, which is called as multiplicative decrease and then gradually increase it again by adding small amount of data rate for each successful transmission, which is called as additive increase. This helps to prevent network congestion and maintain a stable flow of data in TCP. So how we can correlate this congestion control in our real time? So basically, suppose you are driving and as for when we drive, you navigate through a busy traffic or a busy highway. As a result, traffic slow down due to congestion ahead. So to avoid getting stuck in the traffic jam, you might slow down in the vehicle. Similarly, TCP congestion control mechanism monitors the network for congestion and adjusts the send rate. TCP sends the congestion through many different ways. So one is packet loss. The second is ECN. The third one is RTT, round trip time. And the fourth one is window. We will see this TCP congestion control in detail in our next video. So the what all we covered with TCP is TCP introduction. TCP IP is the most important protocol in our internet protocol suite, which is TCP IP. TCP is a connection oriented byte stream protocol. TCP features such as multiplexing, demultiplexing, flow control, congestion control, full duplex. If you have any question, please let me know, share your feedback. I will get back to you. Thank you.